Hello there and welcome to Network Central TV. My name is Pippa, MD of 4N Online, and we are here today with another classroom for you. In the studio here, I have Sheena Wyatt from Kapow, and she is going to be sharing some tips with you. Let me bring her in and she can tell you all about it. Hi, Sheena. Hi, Pippa. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Looking forward to this. It's got a great uh, opportunity to share some good stuff. Absolutely. And what is it you're going to be sharing? Just an overall, let everybody know a little bit about you and your business. So, absolutely. Well, um, I am a business coach. What I actually do is I help business owners feel a bit more empowered to simply do business better. And what I'm going to talk about today is the one of the key things that holds everybody back, which is the assumption that planning means doing. So I'm actually going to start talking about stop faffing, start doing. <laughs> oh, I love that. Right. I'm going to leave you to it. The stage is yours. Thank you very much, Sheena. Thanks, Pippa. Yeah, I'm going to have a chat today about the thing that so many of my coaching clients get stuck with, and that is productivity. You see, business coaching is a funny old thing. Some people think that business coaching is having somebody in the background going rah, rah, rah about your business and, and basically blowing smoke up your backside. But actually, business coaching is more about helping you make good decisions about your business, where you want it to go, what you want it to do next. And part of that is also about helping you as a business owner take your business from A to Z, making sure that you're taking good steps along the way to turn those big dreams into goals, those goals into targets, and those targets into achievable, ticked off things on that to-do list. And where so many people get stuck is that they feel like planning all of that stuff is achieving it. But the truth of the matter is that it doesn't achieve anything unless you're taking action. And in order to take action, you need to be thinking about some key things around that. You need to be thinking about how you prioritise, thinking about effective goal setting rather than just idealist goal setting that's going to nowhere, go nowhere. So I'm going to share with you over the next few minutes my top tips for avoiding planning overwhelm, calming down your mind monkeys when they're going <laughs> so much to do and simply helping you make things happen. So the first thing that I am going to talk to you about is the magic of a brain dump. Oh, yes. A brain dump is a marvellous thing. What you need to do to begin the process of being able to plan effectively and plan for productivity is to get everything that's in your head, all the noise that's up here, out of your head and onto a piece of paper, ideally. If you prefer to do that electronically, throw it at Trello, stick it in an Excel spreadsheet or even an old fashioned Word document. I don't care. Just get it out of your head and onto a piece of paper or some other uh, substance. Get it all the stuff that's rolling around out of your head, just out there, every single last thing. That's important. So don't sit there and think, I've just written, I need to get the cat vaccinated. That's fine. If that's something that's rolling around in your head, get it all out there on a piece of paper. Whatever it is that you put it on, then put that away for a little bit. Yep, get it all out your head, and then put the contents of your head somewhere else and come back to it a little bit later. Coming back to it a little bit later stops your brain going into immediate overwhelm with all the stuff that you know you need to do that you haven't got time to do, don't think you've got time to do, don't know where to start. So you go back to that list and then what you start to do is you go through it and you start to give things a particular number, okay? And you're gonna number things from one to four. Number one is the stuff you need to do to make money for your business. Number two is the routine stuff that you need to do to make sure your business is a business. Number three are your medium term plans and stuff you want to do in that part of your business future. And number fours are your big picture dreams and the ambition stuff. So you rattle through your brain dump. I like to use different colored Sharpies. What I mean, who wouldn't? Um, and mark them all out as ones, twos, threes or fours, money making or a one. Routine stuff is a two, medium stuff, st term stuff, even if I get my teeth in, is a three, and the big picture dreams and ambition stuff is a four. Now we start to get into the nitty gritty because the next top tip that I am going to share with you is what you do with those numbered tasks. So the first thing is that you have a daily to-do sheet. Yes, you do. Do not underestimate the power of a daily to-do sheet. A, ta a daily to-do sheet is not meant to be a chapter of war and peace. It is meant to be a series of bullet points to keep you on track and on target about what you want to do. 
And so many times I get asked the question, how do I know what to do first? You know, oh, why do I, how do I prioritize? Well, first things is look at your number one tasks. Look at how many of those were on your brain dump sheet. This is the stuff that's driving people towards your business. When I talk about money making activities for your business, I don't just mean making sales. I mean, marketing your business. I mean, doing all that stuff that so much of the time, you know, you should be doing, but you don't ever seem to make the time to do it. You need to be doing some of that every single day. That can include going to networking meetings. That's 90 minutes to market your meeting. That's 90 minutes of people looking at a banner behind you, telling them how you can help them. That should be a way that you're looking at doing something like that each and every day, creating content for your social channels, engaging in your social channels rather than just posting and running, following up with leads, nurturing the clients you've already got. So and each day you need to be doing some money making stuff. Uh, it includes social media, blog writing, keep in touch, marketing, calling your clients, all that stuff, anything that keeps you visible. Then you need to make sure that you're doing a few of the routine things that you can easily tick off each day. So do the money making stuff first and then the routine stuff. And remember to reward yourself with something that means something. So, you know, if you're thinking, I've got this job to do and when I'm finished, I'm going to have, a, you know, a cup of tea. Really? Is that is that the best you got? Why not go and have a look and see, is there that thing on Amazon you've been promising yourself, that kind of stuff. Make a reward feel like something you want to achieve rather than just something you can't really be bothered about if you don't get it done. So your daily to-do list is not a chapter of war and peace. It's also not about the medium term stuff and it's not about the long term stuff. It's about the day to day stuff that keeps your business being a business. It's about the day to day stuff that keeps your business visible. It's about the day to day stuff that keeps the routine of your business going. And it's about the day to day stuff of getting your business in front of people. Because you see, the medium term and the long term stuff goes somewhere else and it does somewhere else. The medium term stuff goes into what I call my book of brain your book of brain. You need one. You need a book of brain to collate and work on the medium term stuff. By keeping it all in one place, you can keep dipping into it when you've completed your other tasks. This is the joy of planning effectively. So on your daily to do list, you have your things I need to do today. Money making tasks keep you visible. Things I need to do today, routine tasks. And when you've got those done, then you can think, right, here I go. I'm going to dive into my book of brain. These are the medium term plans you have for your business. The, the medium term stuff that you always tell yourself you haven't got time to do. Well, guess what? Now you do. And if you are proactive about how you plan by looking at when you work to your strengths, then that's the time to start tackling the medium term stuff. There's no point if thinking about your most productive time if that's you know the middle of the afternoon and thinking I'm going to sit down and get some accounts done if the thought of doing that makes your blood run cold. Because it doesn't matter how productive you are in the afternoon. If it's a job you don't want to do, you're not going to do it. So if that's the case, outsource it outsource it. Don't think of the cost to your business of outsourcing. Think of the value it brings to your business because it gives you more time to do what you do best. And it gives you more time to concentrate on where you want your business to go. And by keeping all of those medium term ideas in your book of brain, they are all in one place. And you know what else is brilliant about that is that you can open up that book of brain and think, right, let's go and have a look at one of these ideas. What can I do with it today? And you're either going to think, what on earth was I thinking when you look at the idea and go, right, that's a non-starter. Or you're going to look at it and think, hell yeah, that's got legs. I want to go ahead and explore that. And the joy of keeping that in your book of brain is it stops muddling the day to day message. It stops your brain going, but we should be doing that. We should be doing that and dropping some of the more routine stuff that need you need to be doing to keep visible. So your book of brain is an essential part of making sure that you stop faffing and start doing because it helps you take all of that white noise out of your head about all the stuff you want to do in the medium term, clarify it refine it, then you get to start to pick one idea that you want to focus on each time that you've gone through all the other stuff that you need to do for your business on that day. It's its own form of reward. And how the ideas get into the book of brain actually starts with the last thing that I'm going to talk to you about, which is your wall of brain. These are your number four items on your brain dump list. This 
is the big picture, global domination, mad ambition, stuff that makes you go, yeah, I'm excited and I'm also faintly terrified at the same time. My wall of brain sits here. Um, it's just outside the camera's reach. My wall of brain is basically what the inside of my brain looks like. It's covered in post-it notes. It's covered in all sorts of things. It's covered in a lot of stuff that is also really useful for all of us as business owners to help us stop faffing and start, start doing. My wall of brain is not just about where I want my business to go. It's not just about where I want Kapow to be. It's not just about the services that I want to offer my clients. It's also an affirmation space because let's face it, we all have days when we look at social media channels and everybody else is having a perfect day. We look at social media channels and everybody else's workshops are sold out. They're so busy, this, that and the other, living a perfect life, uh, yawn, yawn, yawn. Every one of us has a day when we get up and we just think, I don't know if I can do this today. I don't know if I'm good enough today. I don't know if I can adult today. My wall of brain is not just about where I want to take my business. My wall of brain is also an affirmation space. On my wall of brain, I have a number of things and I'm going to show you two of them that I need just to reach up and grab. There, my affirmation space is all about good stuff. It's about things that make me happy. And it's also about things that remind me of my skills, my strengths and why I do what I do. So on my wall of brain, I have a few things that help me remember that. On my wall of brain normally that I've pricked it up from here um, is a magic word bracelet. Magic word bracelets made by a fellow 4M member, the lovely Lucy Wilkinson. She sent me this on the 10th anniversary of me uh, being in remission from breast cancer. And it says, I am a superhero, because you know what? I damn well am. And I have that on my wall of brain, and I look at that every single day. And it reminds me that I am enough. I also, on my wall of brain, which I'm looking at, have photographs to remind me of happy times. And I have postcards from clients. I have thank you cards from clients. I have so much on that wall that on those days where I'm thinking, I don't know if I can do this today, I can pick that up and I can look at it. And I think, yes, I can. Look at that testimonial. Look at that thing I did. So here's one of the things that I also normally have on my wall of brain, which I'm just going to try and get in shot. And that is a picture of me having just flown a Wessex helicopter. What you can't see or really can't see because it's a, a very blurry picture and my hand is shaking is how far I had to roll the legs up on that flying suit. And uh, that was taken on the first tour that I was an RAF wife. My husband uh, was a Wessex pilot on 72 Squadron out in Northern Ireland. And I got to fly it for about 30 seconds, it will be it, but I got to fly it and that was amazing. I never thought I would get the opportunity to fly a helicopter. I mean, wow. So I have that on my wall of brain because it's like, do you know what? You can do all this stuff, Sheena. You can do all this stuff. So if you want to stop faffing and start doing First of all, get all the white noise out of your brain. Get it out onto whatever it is that floats your boat, a piece of paper, gotta love me, a post-it note and a Sharpie, or whether it's a Trello board or whatever, just get it out there. Go through it, don't overthink it. Score everything from a one to a four. Money-making stuff is a one, routine stuff is a two. And if you have a whole bunch of number twos that you don't like, that doesn't sound how I meant it to, uh, outsource it. Don't think of the cost to your business, think of the value that it gives, because it gives you more time to do what you do best. Number three is your medium term plans. Number four is your wall of brain. Your big ideas on the wall of brain. Those big ideas start to move into your book of brain and your book of brain ideas start to move on to your daily task list. You take your big dreams, your goals and your ambitions from your wall of brain. You take them into your book of brain and you start to refine them and review them. And then they start to become those things that you are doing to make your business visible, to keep you in front of your potential clients, to show them that you know your stuff and to show them how you can help you. That wall of brain is also your affirmation space. It is that space where you can share the things in your life that make you happy. Things that remind you of what you've achieved. Testimonials from clients, photographs, postcards, anything that you can look at on the days that you feel unmotivated or discouraged to do anything about your business. And remember this key thing, you are enough. Wow, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Sheena. You clearly know your stuff. And I love, do you know what I love? That you actually share your honesty as well, because we do all have 
days where we don't know that we're enough and then we don't know that we can do it. And actually hearing that from somebody like you, who's obviously clearly very successful in business and what you do, it's just really lovely for everybody watching this, actually, that, you know, even even the professionals have days like that. And actually, it's so important that we feel that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Sheena. Is there anywhere that people can find you? I, I imagine people will want to know how they can actually work with you. I know we've got your website there, but what kind of ways can people work with you? Well, indeed, website's the best place to go because the easiest way to find out how you can work with me is to book a free taster session. I offer that to everybody, 15 minutes for us to have a chat about how Kapow Coaching could help you and your business move forward. And the link to go ahead and book that is right there on my website. And you'll also find lots of little places to go and link with me on Facebook and also on Instagram. But the best place, yep, head on over to my website, book a free taster session. Let's have a chat. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And just before we go, this is the networking channel. We must talk just a tiny, tiny bit about your networking journey. So you're a 4N member and you've been a member for a gazillion years, haven't you? Yeah. Yes, gazillion. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's 11 or 12. I've lost count this year. Wow. But yeah, definitely 10 years plus. Uh, yeah, I've been a member for a very, very long time, done every single team role that there is. Um, and some of them, I think probably nobody thought of. Um, yeah. And, um, you, you know, was a regional leader before we went into lockdown, looking after 26 face to face groups over three and a half thousand square miles. Which, when I say that out loud now, Pippa sounds absolutely mental, doesn't it? <laughs> it is a little bonkers, but then you do have to be slightly bonkers in the network. But no, yes. you, you do a fantastic job there. And what is um, one top tip, one top networking tip that you can share with us? Turn up. Oh. Absolutely. Turn up. And I don't just mean physically turn up to the meeting, but when you're going to go to a meeting, be present in the meeting, particularly when they're online. So many people think you can't see that what's going on. And, you know, if you take a phone call, imagine how that looks to the rest of that Zoom room. You can't be bothered to pay attention. Why should I pay attention to you? So don't just turn up physically to the meetings, but be present. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sheena, for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, classroom today and join us next Wednesday for the next classroom. Take care, guys. Let's do, this, do the wave. <laughs>